Okay, so. Basically, massive, massive update for anyone new here that is not really in the loop with what's going on with RoboQuest. Today is the day the Arsenal update comes out, and as the name implies, we are getting new weapons, but that is not it. We are getting two new vendors as well, NPCs. We are getting a uh, new firing range as well, the shooting range, where we can test out our damage. Burger Bill will be running that, so there's a quest to unlock him. Not sure what we have to do for it yet, have not unlocked him, but we do have a shooting range. We can hit this button, you can test your aim, and then once you do have Burger Bill, he will take this little vendor spot. You can consult with the vending machine, and any weapon that you have the card of, you can pull from here to test out. You can also upgrade it, put certain affixes on it, and you can test it out against moving targets, see how quickly you take them out. It does give you damage numbers as well. But we also have a little training dummy here too that you can see your actual damage for, the duration of your damage period, and your DPS overall. So you can do in base camp testing, which is very nice if you don't want to go into the field and hunt down a weapon from RNG to test it out. Now you can just test it out in here to see its effectiveness, and this is great if there's other balance changes in the future as well. Now alongside Burger Bill, there is another NPC that's going to really shake things up for the better of the game in my opinion called Willy Wonder. Let's check him out in the patch notes real quick. So scroll up to the top here, and we have Willy Wonder. Basically, Willy Wonder is going to allow you to upgrade your weapons now on the fly, rather than just increasing their level, it will upgrade their rarity. And you can put new affixes on, I believe. Let me actually scroll down to where it talks about Willy Wonder real quick. Friendly Robots. Willy Wonder. Willy Wonder is locked with base camp upgrade. If you already have all the base camp upgrades, I do believe you get him automatically. This is more for anybody that is not fully upgraded in their base camp workshop yet. It'll just be a new upgrade replacing some of the older ones, so keep that in mind. If you have all of the upgrades, you should already have these guys unlocked, I'm pretty sure. Uh, basically, increases weapons rarity and grants them additional affixes, which is a huge deal. I'm curious how that's going to work. Haven't played yet. We're going to jump in as soon as we're done with the patch notes. Uh, and then, yeah, Burger Bill, like we just said, he owns his own place. But let's scroll up to the top, talk a little bit about what else is coming here. A new resource called Crystal Powder. Now, I really like Crystal Powder here. It is pretty cool because basically it lets you return to older areas of the game that you've maybe visited once or twice so you could get that power crystal and move on but now you can actually have incentive to go back there because instead of a power crystal there will be crystal powder which you can use at willy wonder to upgrade epic rarity weapons to fantastic rarity weapons the orange rarity that's how you're going to do it finally incentive to go back to those really awesome and fun areas they also all have their own soundtrack and i think they all bang a lot so I'll, I'll take an excuse to head back there any day. Also, big deal for engineer fans that like to do drone builds and just big news in general. Basically, there is a new keyword called summon added to the game. And this is applied to basically any minion. So yeah, drones, decoys, sentry turrets, anything that's essentially autonomous, it feels like. Don't quote me. Anything that seems autonomous for the most part anyways from what i've read here sounds like it's going to be listed under the summon keyword now that will be kind of like the blanket uh keyword for drones for the engineer but think like kangaroo sentry for buddy bot we have like a little mr me seeks box that's been added to the game we're going to go over the when we go over the new weapon section but yeah things that are basically autonomous of you will be listed as summons and they seem like they want to work that more into regular gameplay loops for not just the engineer, but other classes as well. So I'm excited to see how that's going to go. Not really my play style, but with the amount of effort they've put in to kind of bring that to the foreground, I am, I'm going to play it a little bit more and see if I end up liking it. But we've got a lot to work through here. Also, here are the new weapons. I can actually show them off here. Let me scroll up to all the new weapons. So we have Missile Battery, which is just a rocket minigun. We have the rapier. I'm ex I'm actually excited for this because it seems like it's a crit focused melee weapon. So that's really cool. Something Ranger's probably gonna have a great time with. Sling gun. This one I'm not too excited for. I'm gonna try them all out just from appearances alone. Not too excited for sling gun. Minion box is the little Mr. Me Seeks box out box I was telling you about. 
This looks like it could be pretty crazy with the new summon keyword being added. A lot of crazy stuff could happen here. Mini Cricket actually seems like it does a lot of damage. That's two instances of 421 damage in the fields. So curious to see what we can do with that. I believe that's also an Easter egg reference to Noisy Cricket, although I'm not too sure what that is. I've just heard it being referenced to that. Goss Rifle seems like it could be fun. Kind of don't really know what to expect out of that. Just going to have to pick it up and try it out for ourselves. B Cannon. This one's actually very interesting because... This is probably my favorite addition of the game, even if I don't like the weapon itself and I'm not going to use it as much. The B Cannon is really cool because if you don't know, in the RoboQuest official Discord, they have a suggestions tab. And this is proof that the developers take your suggestions into consideration because back when official release happened, when version 1.0 came out, I saw a lot of the community upvoting somebody's, just some regular dude's suggestion for B grenades to be added to the game. And although this is not a bee grenade, they did take that idea of bees and run with it, and it did eventually get added. So if you are passionate about an idea for the future of this game, go ahead and visit the official RoboQuest Discord and drop it in the suggestions chat uh, in the uh, suggestions channel, because they do actually take those into consideration. And you know, it most of them don't, won't get added, but the ones that do, they wouldn't have happened if they weren't suggestions. So you know, if you love the game and you want to contribute to it go there and also just be part of the community tons of lovely people in the rebel quest community just go check out the discord and say hi boomerang is another addition that got a lot of hype i know in the subreddit before the arsenal update came out this was like one of the first weapons we saw showcased about what was coming with the arsenal update i'm excited for this excited for this but the one i am most excited for i'm sure many of you who watch my content know that i'm a huge kunai fan and now we are getting the shuriken Hoping that this thing is just as dirty as the kunai is, because I love my little ninja weapons, okay? They're they're fun to me. But yeah, this kind of shows you what Willy Wonder is going to be like. You have a little upgrade, and then you use your little crystal dust to upgrade from epic to legendary, or fantastic, if that's what you want to call it. And then yeah, burger bill in the training range, so great stuff. And this is what the crystal dust is going to look like. And then, uh, yeah, summon factions and all that. But we can go back to the more detailed stuff, because... For those that want to go uh, very specific and look at the newer things, the fine details, we have some affix changes. One of which is that Buckshot's trigger chance is being increased from 15 to 20, which I'm a big fan of. And Fragmentation is getting a visual rework, it seems. So that's cool, too. Uh, Puncture got a little bit of a buff from 50 to 75. And Cadence got a little bit of a nerf from 15% to 10% fire rate. And we're getting some new affixes, and some of these seem like they are heaters. Echo gives you an additional ricochet and ricochet damage. Uh, I can't really think off the top of my head anything that I use most of the time that ben would benefit from that, so I'm not too fond of that one, but I'm sure it has some niche role that it just pops off in. I'm just a little bit of a brain fart on my end because I can't think of a direct example for it in my regular playstyle. Interceptor seems like it could be great just because flying enemies can be troublesome. And there's quite a bit of them, honestly. Big game could be great. I mean, Iris is a flying enemy too, I believe. So that would, Interceptor could play a big role depending on the damage increase. Big game, just great against bosses. That seems like something I'm going to want to take a lot. Uproot, bonus damage against turrets. Eraser seems like it's going to be universally the best, unless it gives a really low damage increase. But you always want to work mark in your builds, whether that be through a bowl item or if you just have a skill that you can constantly proc or even if you want to run a flare gun for that purpose and the rocket jumps you could do that as well but eraser seems like it is going to be pretty solid option from here on out in the affix uh, table haste bonus move speed uh, speed runners gonna love this leader bonus summon damage again they were leaning into that summon thing could be fun and then pinata chance to drop several healing cells on takedown so that's also pretty cool, just for survivability's sake. Could work that into some challenge runs if we want to do some more of those in the future. Uh, tons of balance changes here. Keep in mind, I will be linking these patch notes in the description below. But let's just go over the ones that I think are most notable. I think Thumper's getting a little bit of a nerf here. Most noticeably, it's explosion radius going down a little bit. Now, Thumper was absurdly strong in the last update. It went from being a extremely forgettable weapon, in my opinion, to one of the best explosive weapons in the game. So I expected this, and honestly, it's not neutered. It's not going to be one of those make-or-break nerfs, okay? It's still going to be an extremely strong option. I think this just makes it 
more in line with the other explosive weapons. So don't don't just immediately think, oh, it got a nerf, it's unusable. No, this is not that big of a change in my opinion. It's still going to feel incredibly strong. So just keep using it. You'll still be doing great with it if you became a Thumper fan after their last major update. Then we have the Comet Cannon. This is kind of a mixed bag. Some buffs, some nerfs. I'm not really too familiar with the Comet Cannon, so I can't speak to great lengths on it. But if you are a Comet Cannon enjoyer, you might want to check this out. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Beluga Cannon is a weapon that I am a huge fan of. And the Explosion Radius got a pretty nice buff. Seems like they almost kind of reverted what they did in the last major update. Because the damage got decreased this time around. And Explosion Radius got massively increased, in my opinion. Point four is a pretty big deal. Uh, Volcano Rifle got a little bit of an Explosion Radius buff. Junk Beam got like a full change. So now they made it so it has a way faster fire rate and the energy cost went down, but the damage also went down substantially. So they want to make it a more rapid hitting weapon now. So we'll kind of see how that is. I wouldn't call it a nerf or a buff. It just kind of seems like a change to how it's going to operate from here on out. So gonna gonna have to do some testing with that, but we're going to mainly be hunting down arsenal weapons uh, to, in today's stream anyways. And then what else do we have here that I pointed out? Oh yeah, Gorilla Bolter now has a crit ratio buff. So now instead of being the the base default uh, crit value for anything that doesn't have a listed crit value, which is 1.25 by the way, uh, now it has 1.5 and that could be really big with a heavy hitting gun like Gorilla Bolter. It did suffer a tiny damage decrease, but I think that's pretty negligible. I think it actually is a pretty nice buff going from 1.25 to 1.5 crit multiplier. So, any uh, Gorilla Bolter enjoyers, let me know how you think about that, or how you feel about that change. And then, Pulsar Rifle had a little bit of a Explosion Radius nerf, but Projectile Speed increased, so that could feel better, make it a little bit more hit scan -ish. Not really, but, you know, might just make it feel better now that it's going to be firing faster. Not fire rate, but Projectile Speed. Shark Sniper also got a little bit of a damage increase. Still not a fan, not my cup of tea. But anyone that does like Sharp Sniper, you're going to be getting a, a, a nice buff sent your way. I know it's an incredibly strong single target damage weapon, so any Shark Sniper enjoyers, be happy you got a little bit of a buff here. Kangaroo Century also got a bit of a change. I, I have almost no experience with the Kangaroo Century. It just doesn't fit my playstyle, so I'm not even going to really talk about that. Uh, just let me know what you think about it in the comments below if you do use it. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the gadgets. So, survivability is going down a little bit here. A little bit of a survivability nerf because grappling hooks cooldown went up from 4 seconds to 5 seconds. Some people might complain about that. Really don't think it's a big deal. Grappling hook is a crutch item. <laughs> you get, like, iframes while you're grappling. And I use it as often as I possibly can. So, having that be nerfed a little bit is not that bad in my opinion. But, the trade-off is that Hero Cape now has its uh, maximum bonus damage increase from 200% to 300%. And that is actually a big deal because Hero Cape is one of the most slept on items in the game. Now the top like probably like 5% of players who play RoboQuest on like a regular basis will utilize Hero Cape as much as they possibly can just because it's another movement tool and another, uh, another source of damage. Few items can benefit it as well. But having it increase like this could draw a lot more newer players towards the hero cape and have them use it more. And I think that extra second of cooldown for grappling hook, I think that nerf to survivability is more than made up for for the increase to hero cape's damage. I know they're not directly comparable because not every situation is going to call for a hero cape or a grappling hook, but I am really excited about this hero cape damage increase. And then here's some multiplayer items. You guys can check that out in the patch notes yourself. Still have not played co-op once in this game, so like, no comment on that. But we are getting some new items added. Chestnut is going to give you bonus uh, hero cape damage based on your armor. So another thing that leans into that hero cape buff. The ocarina increases summon damage and reduces your damage. So heavily leaning into summon builds there. Again, curious to try them out. Probably still not going to be my preferred playstyle, but... Still going to try it out, so we're definitely going to be hunting down Ocarina and Onion, which increases Summon's fire rate. Transformer Toy summons a drone to fight alongside you permanently. I'm curious to see what the rarity on this is going to be. I imagine it's going to be a fantastic item, but this is interesting because it opens up a Summon's uh, playstyle for any class in the game, uh, and there could be more to come. I They said that they changed 
multiple classes abilities to work summons into them so i'm just excited to see how that kind of works i think even ranger's decoy counts as one now too so I, i'm just i'm just curious about summons they are really pushing this uh summons thing into the game a lot they want people to try it out so we will we will at some point try out these summon builds and see how fun they are uh potato increases explosion damage just seems very solid in general and then ball and chain is also interesting because it increases the grappling hook damage but also increases its cooldown i don't think i'd ever take that because you don't really use grappling hook for damage you use it for a uh, movement or for a slight interruption on enemies so like if a sniper's looking at you and you don't think you can dodge it you grapple them they get stunned for a little bit call it a day and kill them this actually increases the grapple hook damage though which is very interesting maybe it massively increases the damage and makes it like a viable damage option i would be curious for that i'm always excited for anything that changes the way you play the game and if they make grappling hook do considerable damage with this item that would change the way you play the game so again don't know if it's actually going to but would be cool to see if it did we're going to definitely definitely be checking these out uh base camp we kind of went over these already there's a few more things you can check out in the patch notes if you want friendly robots again we went over this enemies so they increased the base health of the goliath cruiser from 660 to 720 let's actually check out what that is because i don't know what that is by heart but we can check it out here in the uh, robo zoo where is a goliath cruiser so this is the goliath cruiser and that's the goliath destroyer okay so basically same thing but cruiser's just a little bit uh lighter okay that's fair and at the end of fields, you would have to fight a Goliath Destroyer. Uh, but now you can fight a, a Goliath Cruiser, which is nice. Basically, fields is going to get easier from here on out, boys. Um, reduce many safe areas. Okay. I don't know what security pods means, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, random chunks, though. So they're going to be adding more uh, enemy variation, randomness when they spawn clusters of enemies in Haven City and the Moon. Uh, quality of life so i haven't used any of these yet don't know how they're going to be but they seem interesting check those out in the patch notes too if you're interested uh, we have some language changes some updated language localizations for anyone that talks german korean chinese traditional chinese uh dutch and farsi also got added to the game so that's cool for anyone that speaks those languages and then we have a few bug fixes and that does it we are going to get into the game here in a little bit but yeah uh what's it talking about here what are we talking about here um yeah, that's the patch notes. I'm excited to get in there. Let me just go ahead and uh, clip that real quick. Uh, yeah, so just for the sake of the video, hope you all have a great day. I'm Hatterax signing off. Peace. <laughs> enjoy the enjoy the Arsenal update. Okay, now the rest.